Okay, let's talk about creating and installing a virtual machine in ESXi. Now, we've already done this a little bit, but I want to go ahead and walk back through this process again um, just for kind of a refresher. So I'm going to go to my virtual machines, and I've already got one, but I'm going to go ahead and create another virtual machine. So I'm going to come up here and click Create a Register VM. I can create a new virtual machine, deploy from an existing file, or registering an existing one. So if I've already got an existing VM that I've removed from the system for whatever reason, I can put it back in by registering it. So I'm going to create one and click Next. I'm going to set a name, and this is going to be a sample VM because I don't feel creative today. Compatibility. All right, this has to do with what kind of devices I can move this to. So if I've got multiple ESXi systems in my data center, then I might want to set this, or I do want to set this to the oldest system that I would potentially want to move this VM to. So let's say I've got a two ESXi servers that are running version 7 and one that's running version 6.5. Uh, so if I thought, all right, I might want to move this at some point to the one we're running 6.5, then I'd want to make sure I set that. If I'm thinking, no, this is only going to be on my two that are running, you know, current version, uh, 7.0 U2, then I'd probably keep it here. So that's what that compatibility is for. I'm going to set my OS family. I'm going to do a Windows, and I'm going to do a Windows Server 2022 64-bit system. Now, this will kind of predefine some basic settings for us. So that's why we go ahead and set that. I'm not going to enable Windows virtualization based security at this point. So I'm going to click Next. And then where am I going to store this? So I can store this in my standard data store, which is pretty much the only option that I have right now, or in persistent memory if I had it, but I don't. So I'm going to leave it in my standard data store and click Next. And then here's where we set the settings. So the CPU of our uh, two CPUs, the four gigabytes of memory, the uh, 90 gigabyte virtual disk. So all of these are kind of based on me saying, hey, I'm running Windows Server 2022. All right, I'm gonna choose my network adapter here and I wanna choose my standard VMs. Now, if you remember uh, from our previous video, we created more port groups and a new virtual switch. And so I want this to go into my standard VMs port group, which will be on my uh, new virtual switch. <clears throat> and you can reference back to that other video for how we did that. Now, my CD drive, I can connect this to my host device or I can choose a data store ISO file. Now, that probably is gonna make more sense because I'm probably gonna to wanna to store ISOs in my data store so I'm not always having to run back to the server room and make sure I've got the right CD and that seems kind of crazy. So I'm going to choose a data store ISO file. Now, at this point, I've already done a little bit of this because it takes a little while, but I want to show you how to do it. So in my data store, I created a new folder called ISO. In, in that ISO folder, I put my server 2022 uh, ISO. So basically what I just do is from the data store, I can create a directory if I wanted to go somewhere else. Um, once I get my directory created, I can do an upload. So I can upload and then pick whatever one that I want, let's say this one, and click open. And it's going to take it a little while, so I'm not going to do it right now. But it will upload into, as long as I'm here, this folder. So upload, delete, move, copy, and there's my ISO. So once I have, let me cancel back out of here. So once I've got that done, when I come here, I can choose data store ISO file browse and find the ISO file that I want. And once I'm happy with it, I click next. And I now have that ISO associated with this device. So let me go ahead and click next and finish. And that will complete our virtual machine. And our sample virtual machine has now come up. So I'm going to click on my sample virtual machine and I'm going to go ahead and start it up. So I'm going to hit power press any key to boot from CD, and I didn't catch it fast enough because I was on the wrong thing. So let's go ahead and power it off. Now let me power it, click in, and then hit a key, and there we go. And now we're going through our install. So I am basically sitting at the console of 
this virtual machine. And I'm going to go ahead and click install now. And I'm going to minimize this. So here are my options here. I can shrink it. I can minimize it. I can go full screen. Let me click. Uh, yeah, let's do let's do a standard evaluation. We'll do it without a desktop experience this time. And so I can choose to move on and do something else while this is working. Let me get this started here real quick. Yep, don't care. And so then I can shrink this. And now it's sitting down here in my corner or I can close it out completely. I still have my preview up here. And now I can monitor my virtual machine, right? I can see what it's doing. This, by the way, notice is I have to click on it and it shows me where I'm actually at. That doesn't always update. Let me shrink that. So this should stay updated. This one won't always update unless I come over here and say refresh the console screenshot. So. Now I can go on and do something else and keep working. And then this is just going to keep working in the background. Okay. Also, this now gives me the ability to see what is going on on my system as we'll start generating some uh, CPU usage. We'll start generating some memory usage. This is for my host, but this right this is for my host. Click on my sample VM. Nope. I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay. It's working. So I'm going to let this continue to run in the background here for a few minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. Actually, you know what? It's already almost done. So let's just hang with it here for a minute while it does our reboot. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and shrink that back down a little bit so I can edit this virtual machine. And there are some things that I simply cannot change while the system is running. And you'll see, you know, some of these things have been grayed out. But I can choose to disconnect this and then save. And so that basically ejects the virtual or the uh, virtual CD. So let this system finish coming back up. And we are just about ready to go. Set my password. Password has been changed. And we are in. So our virtual machine is set up and running. And hey, we got it. So now I, I'm going to go ahead and close my access to my virtual machine refresh this so I can see where I'm at. And now I can keep working on other systems, let this run in the background, do whatever I need it to do. But the point is my virtual system is up and running here inside uh, ESXi. Now we're starting to see some activity showing up here as we get to some of those sampling intervals. Okay, there we go. We have created a virtual machine and installed it in ESXi.